Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard, and today we have super special guest here, Alicia Stella, the permanent princess herself, all the way from Orlando, Florida. Welcome aboard. Thank you so much for joining. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me on. And, and you know, super excited to have you on and talk about all about Epic Universe and Universal Orlando Parks. Um, even how long have you been covering this stuff? Um, I've been talking about Epic Universe specifically for about a year since before it was announced, so 2018. And I've been talking about theme parks since 2015 Ooh. on the internet. <laughs> wow, incredible! That yeah, eight years of experience, incredible. So, um, by the way, of course, I'll link her, her stuff down below. She's on Theme Park Stop and Orlando Park Stop YouTube and uh, website. Up to first to know information right there. So Epic Universe, the property, the, not the park, but the property is around a thousand acres, if I'm correct, right? Um, there's at least 750 like acres that they acquired. Uh, and the actual theme park itself is on like a 400 acre contiguous site in the center um, mm -hmm. with Shingle Creek, Shingle Creek off to the side. But the actual theme park itself for Epic Universe is about the size of um, Islands of Adventure, but it doesn't have the big giant lagoon in the center. So there is more usable space. <clears throat> and there's also a huge backstage space behind it and a huge parking lot that's a flat parking lot. Uh, they could always expand to a second theme park next to Epic Universe, but they would have to build parking garages which, you know, they did in the 90s at the original resort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, was, that was one of my questions. I was thinking, wondering, because, I mean, the size of probably seems like it can fit definitely another theme park and maybe mean like another, like, city walk type experience. Is that, like, in the future, like, long-term plans down the road? I think, yeah, they built the theme park in a position where they can expand to another theme park and something else, whether it be a water park or an entertainment complex, maybe something like City Walk, but even more geared toward entertainment. So there's lots of options down the line. And there's lots of room for more hotels around the property, just like there are a couple being built across the street. They actually own more land up Universal Boulevard behind I Drive. So they can have hotels from endless summer all the way down to Epic Universe. Oh, wow. That would be like thousands of rooms. That would be, <laughs> could that be as many rooms as Disney World? Like if um, fully built out? I mean, yeah, if they add another theme park on top of Epic Universe, they're getting pretty close. There'll be one water park and a few hotels yeah. away from uh, catching up. <laughs> uh, and that'll be, it'll be pretty cool because it'll be in a more compact space. So we can, you can hit it all faster mm -hmm. than probably at Disney World. That'd be, that'd be pretty insane. Um, and then for Epic Universe itself, obviously, it's, you know, has plenty of, We'll have plenty of great rides to start off as, but always room for more. And, you know, as you reported, Monsters or Dark Universe might have an expansion down the line. Wizarding World mm -hmm. uh, had a ride that was cut. Um, what, what time, when do you think those expansions will come? Like, do you think it'll come sooner or later? Um, I think it's possible because there was a planned attraction for the Wizarding World area that isn't being built, that that could be the first site we see an additional um, something be built. So even though they have the main ride for the Wizarding World at Epic Universe, which is the British Ministry of Magic, huge, biggest indoor ride at the park, they have this big empty space. And I think that we may see something even start construction before the park opens in that space. But what I haven't said out loud publicly yet is that there's still more room for something else after that in the Wizarding World. They actually had an expansion plot behind where the VR was going to go. So whatever we see as like a 2026 expansion for Wizarding World may only be a small expansion and that a bigger one may come later. Uh, and then, yes, the, the Dark Universe has a huge section um, set aside for a third ride 
which was originally rumored to be a creature from the Black Lagoon boat ride. But honestly, mm -hmm. it could be anything and they can change their mind because they still have probably a few years before they'll start constructing something for the Dark Universe expansion. Interesting. Do you think they, do you think they still go with that boat ride concept? Because I noticed, I, I was thinking about it, Universe still doesn't have many like boat rides and like kind of like Pirates of the Caribbean type rides in general. Yeah, I think there's a chance the Zelda... Uh, rumored Zelda land at Islands of Adventure replacing Lost Continent. That could be an indoor boat ride, uh, but they don't. They don't really have too many indoor dark boat rides at any Universal Park. They had yeah. one in Universal Singapore for Madagascar and they had to close it to open Minion Land. So we lost <laughs> like the one that they did have. Jaws was outside mostly, but um, at least mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. all the water rides are like flume rides or raft rides. Uh, there will be one water ride at the yeah, really. universe for How to Train Your Dragon, but that's like a little kitty boat ride that you like twist the thing and it squirts water cannons. Mm -hmm. So not really an indoor like the like, like the Legoland ones, ride. right? That little exactly splash, like that, that. Little Legoland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. the same ride system as that. So I hope that the indoor boat ride happens for monsters because we need more indoor boat rides. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because I, I think Universal would kill it with the, sticking a whole bunch of animatronics and like an indoor s slow moving boat ride. That'd be pretty good. Didn't they have one for Kung Fu Panda? One at, oh, on they the did just open Party? one at, in Beijing. Yes, they just opened at Universal Beijing the Kung Fu Panda ride. Um, and I think like that is, and it even has a little drop like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. So I think that's something they may use the same ride system for Zelda. Um, because you can really do anything, animatronic screens, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just a slow moving boat ride through a building. Yeah, because I was when I was thinking of that when they announced the post the DreamWorks thing, not sure how much space there is in that you know, behind that, that kid's own area. But I'm like, wow, that would have been a cool little Kung Fu Panda dark ride to put back if there was enough space for the, that kids are in the new dreamworks land at universal studios florida but is there enough space back there like yeah. is there like is it like nothing not for phase one on that land but if they needed to or wanted to in the very distant future they could remove one of the parade buildings behind the mm -hmm. old barney theater uh, they would lose a halloween horror nights haunted house space but they could mm -hmm. build a dark ride back there uh, especially a kitty dark ride, something the size of Secret Life of Pets would fit very easily without having to destroy too much back there. Um, but yeah, I would love to see. I would love to see a Trolls indoor boat ride. Uh, I think with the uh, because it's so colorful, it would really lend itself Ooh, well to a dark yes. dark ride. Yeah, that would be that would be really. And there's not. Many trolls rides or any trolls rides. I don't know. There's going to be the troller coaster, but other than that, not like real like ground up trolls rides. That'd be that'd be a great one. Mm -hmm. And then Epic Universe, of course, has the those two empty empty big expansion plans. Mm -hmm. um, I know, I know. It's at some point, maybe, maybe talk of the Lord of the Rings or or something like that. Whereas in the early stages. Anything you know or anything you've heard about that or just completely nothing for those two big, big empty expansion spots? If you look at the concept art for Epic Universe, on the left is a smaller expansion between Super Nintendo World and the Monsters Land. And on the right is a huge expansion plot uh, in between the Hub Roller Coaster and Wizarding World. I don't think they have plans for the giant expansion plot on the right. I think they're saving it in case they get something big like Lord of the Rings and they want to mm -hmm. build there. But the one on the left has always been rumored to be more Nintendo, um, whether that be something outside of Nintendo like Pokemon, which they only half own, or more likely, I'm believing it could be actual expansion to Super Nintendo World. So like Super Nintendo World Plus, and you get maybe a Luigi's Yay. Mansion uh, dark ride, interactive dark ride, um, maybe uh, Kirby's Dreamland kid play area, something that could connect 
with some more warp pipe uh, pipes, like connecting it the way that they're going to do a Donkey Kong country. So you go to the back mm -hmm. of the land at Super Nintendo World and you look straight ahead, you can go to Donkey Kong country. There's a space to the right. They could put a pipe over to Luigi's mansion. So it's uh, it's definitely possible that land could be Ooh. split up. It could be open in phases and we could just keep getting more Nintendo for the next 10 years. That would be that would be really cool. What I didn't even yeah. think of that. Yeah, because it really would connect quite nicely. Mm -hmm. um, but interesting, if they did that, do you think there would still be only one entrance and one exit, or would they add another warp pipe exit and entrance to the new expansion? Because that would be like a um, lot to go. Yeah, I'm not sure actually, and they, they might not even be sure yet. So. It may be a wait and see to see how successful Super Nintendo World is in this location since it will be the third to open around the world. And if it needs the extra capacity, they might like put a rush on something like this. And yeah, we might see a separate portal mm -hmm. entry from the hub, but also it would make like a full loop to go through the land and come back out the other way. Yeah, that would be cool. And you haven't been to Super Nintendo World out here, have you yet? In I California? have not. No. <laughs> Waiting for the big one. <laughs> I, I was originally going you know, to. Hey, guys... Yeah, I was going to. My my plans had to be canceled. Uh, and I'm like, well, you know what? I'm close enough now. I'm just going to wait for the, the full scale version of Super Nintendo World. I know. It's like a year and a half away. <laughs> Boy, so that's what I'm curious. I heard some people say, or speculate at least, that you know things like Nintendo and, and some of these lands that from bio reconstructs and lovely photos that look almost done. Do you think there'll be like maybe a soft open like before the official opening of the land? Like like maybe in 2025, like early in 2025, like you can only yeah. get to Super Nintendo World or something. You know, you it's know, possible. I remember when like Dragon and that was a like done. I remember when Islands of Adventure was um, gearing up to open in the months leading up to it, they did team member previews for like a month or so, three months before the park even opened. And I think that's what we could see is we could see team member previews earlier so they can get used to operations and testing the rides. And then maybe pass holder previews or even some kind of paid early entry mm -hmm. to Super Nintendo World, as long as the things are ready. But uh, from some mm. of the rumors I've heard, not everything is going to be ready early. So even if they did do some kind of preview, uh, mm -hmm. I remember going to Animal Kingdom uh, for a cast member preview. And the entire continent of Asia wasn't ready mm. yet. So they just like bypassed you around it. So we might get <laughs> previews, but you know, the, the main ride at Wizarding World might not be ready yet. The, the main ride at Monsters might not be ready yet. So even though Super Nintendo World will be ready, it won't be a full preview if the animatronics or the ride systems aren't ready on some of the other attractions. So, um, but yeah, the, the park itself should be walkable and ready by like January, February of 2025. So they can get some ride inspections and get um, cleared for testing with humans, like the, to get team members in there and start testing. So I, I think by by January, like uh, of 2025, we're gonna see a nearly ready to go looking theme park. And that's cool because again, like you said, with the you know, house, some things may not be ready. The setup of the park kind of lends and allows itself to that where it's, it won't be too mm -hmm. much of a you know just disruption let's say a monster is not ready because it's just a separate portal so you can just close yeah. off the portal you know it's not asia like at animal kingdom it'll be like sort of separate portal. so that'd be it's really laid out nicely for that um mm -hmm. and speaking of that actually because of that you know there's been plenty of rumors around for like years now you know how this is gonna work you know it be like a normal ticket experience you buy it and then you're actually the whole park and well, everyone get access to the celestial park area and then you have to pay mm -hmm. to go into the war parks how do you think it's gonna work do they not know yet are they are they even still deciding themselves like how do you think what do you think personally is the best way to handle that situation um well there's been lots of rumors and they have went through different like ideas early on i'm sure the current concept, because all the lands, like you say, 
um, or they're like Diagon Alley. They have like one yeah. main entry and exit out in like in and out of the land. So it is easy to close it off or restrict who can enter. Um, the current rumor is you would only be able to buy usually a day ticket, mm -hmm. a theme park ticket, and you can go to the mm -hmm. theme park and have access to the whole theme park. They're not going to sell a la carte individual lands for the daytime theme park experience. If they did, people would only buy Nintendo and they would not sell tickets mm -hmm. to some of the other lands. And that would be a, a, a yeah. <laughs> so you get your one theme park ticket, you go <laughs> to all the whole theme park, but, at 6 p.m., just like City Walk now has free parking after 6, the idea is mm -hmm. by 6 p.m., they would mm -hmm. let anyone into the central part of Epic Universe, the Celestial Park. And the Celestial Park, what the rumored name for the hub area is, would act like City Walk. Mm -hmm. um, it's Celestial Park, like Central Park, because it's down the center. Um, but it would have uh -huh. uh, restaurants, Get it. shopping, mm -hmm. things to do. Um, but if you wanted to go into one of the theme park lands, you would still need a whole theme park ticket. However, it's possible that when the lands close, like let's say the theme park attractions close at eight, the hub may stay mm -hmm. open till 10 or 11 PM, allowing people to dine and shop and wait for the fireworks at the end of the night. Um, and that everyone kind of crowds out of the theme park lands, uh, so then you're kind of crowded in there with the, the non-paying guests. Here's an opportunity, though, where they can sell a la carte extra nighttime hours tickets so that if you walk over to Super Nintendo World and they're like, oh, you can come in. It's just $35.99 and you, it's for two hours. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into this, this land after the park has already closed. They can uh -huh. do that if they want to. And that is where the weird, unique, open hub concept could generate more money. But it also means that they could sell after hours private events to like companies, corporations, um, convention goers, because the convention center is right outside. Mm -hmm. They could sell like group tickets to like essentially private rent out a whole land of the theme park. So after like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., when the whole park closes, you just let in only the special after hours park goers, the like the corporation that bought it out or whatever. So they have lots of opportunities to use the weird design of this theme park uh, in a way that you really can't do any other, any other park. Yeah, that, that would be actually pretty cool, honestly. The, um, the come to Super Nintendo World for like 35 bucks for like two hours, because I mean that like if you don't want to buy a day ticket and you just want to experience one land, that would mm -hmm. be like the perfect way to do it. You know? then, I mean, didn't now, didn't Hollywood do you... a early entry for Super Nintendo World that's kind of similar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just pay extra, come an hour early, and hey, it has been three weeks in advance, it's still sold out. So wow, that okay. is a high demand there. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. very hour when my friends are visiting. I'm like. They're like early entry on the get, but please plan it ahead of time because it's always sold out about a month ahead. So, <laughs> you know, still very popular. And for Horror Nights, at least for the month, I'm thinking because you got me thinking of Horror Nights with the Monsters Land type of ordeal. Not sure if they're going to do Halloween Horror Nights in Epic Universe, but I mean, if they want to see like a mini like Horror Nights experience with the Dark Universe afterwards, like a little tiny upcharging, that would be kind of cool. Like a little Horror Nights light for like two hours on certain nights or certain days of the month. Well, they're, they're definitely going to think about incorporating new kinds of holiday events into this park mm -hmm. um, and utilize that open hub concept. So like we would go to Disney Springs or downtown Disney over there for their holiday offerings and it's free to go in. Like we mm -hmm. have the Christmas tree trail here at Disney Springs um, mm -hmm. and that's a way to get people to go and shop and, and, and explore. This could be an opportunity like that, yeah, where they could do a Halloween event and you could have like trick or treating throughout the hub. And then mm -hmm. if you want to go do the special overlay attraction, you have to pay mm -hmm. extra. Or they're going to have a um, multi purpose building like theater building that is a phase two off of the hub. 
Um, it's located just to the left of the entrance of Super Nintendo World. And if they build like a soundstage there, they could do some kind of like family friendly type haunted house exper experience mm -hmm. or some Grinchmas like uh, holiday show in that building. Mm -hmm. And th that could be like an upcharge. So like, welcome to the Celestial Park holiday experience. But if you mm. want to go see the show, pay us 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Man. And for the rides and in the Celestial Park, Star for Racers and the uh, mm -hmm. uh, Constellation Carousel, would those also be part of the free after 6 p.m. or would, those, would they have to pay for those? In the plans, in the permitted plans, they actually have their own portal entries um, oh. with their own, like, uh, it's not really a turnstile, but the facial recognition mm -hmm. system. So oh, if the, if you're, if you're open, if the hub is open and the rides are still running, it will be checking to make sure you have authority to go through that turnstile and go on this ride. So, oh. and it's possible they could sell it all a cart after like the park normal hours close and then everyone's just hanging out, they'd be like, Hey, if you want to ride this roller coaster, 15 bucks. <laughs> so it's possible they could do that, but it does have in the plans, a, a portal, just like the lands to go to these two rides. Ah, so, so yeah, not even those we included in mm -hmm. that's smart. That's actually pretty. And the, with this facial recognition technology, I really like this. I know some people are like privacy, but I mean, hey. This phone here has all your information, right? So, <laughs> so um, but I really like it because here in Hollywood, and I haven't gotten my, my first time at Universal Orlando in 2025 when I go, but here in Hollywood, the fingerprint thing, it really annoys me because that half the time they can't get it because they're not pressing mm -hmm. it down correctly. The lines back up. So, um, man, I hope this, what do you think this facial, technolo facial technology will but to all the universal parks in the around the world because i'd love to just show my face and walk through instead of like waiting this long line to mm -hmm. do my thing i think universal studios beijing is already using their own version uh, mm -hmm. or at least it was planned to i don't know I, I haven't been there so i'm not sure exactly but the plan in orlando it's already starting testing at islands of adventure mm -hmm. um and they're expanding it into more turnstiles every week I think when Halloween Horror Nights ends, shortly after, we'll see it start testing at Universal Studios Florida. And the current system for facial recognition is just phase one, which is where you scan your ticket, it scans your face, um, it takes a picture the first time, and then it compares your face to the picture every time after. Uh, but eventually, they want to get it so that after that first time, you never mm -hmm. have to scan your ticket again. You just scan your face Ooh. and you walk right in. And then by the time Epic Universe opens, they won't even have you scan your ticket at the turnstile. They'll have it go to a different line off to the side or even the app before you come to the theme park, scan your face, connect it to your ticket, and then you just walk into the theme park. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to scan your face. There's just cameras and the cameras see you and they let you in. So that is, uh, they have a year and a half to figure it out, but we're only on phase one and it's already faster than the fingerprints, at least for me, because it never scans my fingerprint. I know, so annoying. <laughs> Boy, yeah, I like that a lot. Oh, I hope that comes everywhere, not just the universe, I just like everywhere, like concerts, like I'm, that'd be amazing. Um, that's super cool. Do you think they'll allow it, or if it's even possible, if, you know, like for paying like if you like if you like you can scan your card to the app now but imagine if you just you're signed into the universal app right you go to get a trail or something mm -hmm. and you just look at the camera and pay with your face and you don't have to take out anything i don't know if they're going to do it for payments but they will probably do it for lockers instead of fingerprints or tickets you just look at the screen and it opens the locker for you if they were to do it for payments, they would have to incorporate a pin number um, just like yeah, they do sure. for the Tapu Tapu at Volcano Bay. There has to be, um, or even now the app on your phone you can um, mm -hmm. use to pay at Universal, but you have to put in a pin number at the register. Just an extra layer of security. But yeah, yeah I think for things like lockers especially, they don't want you to have to carry around a ticket anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all going to be just your face, at least at Epic Universe. Yeah, and the lockers too, 
I'm like, wow, especially because I used to work here at Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I used to work at Forbidden Journey. And when I was on, you know, on the locker duty, so many people, and it wouldn't be their fault, just the machines wouldn't get their finger, and then we have to open it for them. And, mm -hmm. you know, if they can just eliminate that. I feel like a lot more, a lot less busy in the locker room and a lot a lot more happier, I guess. So that would be, be pretty cool. I, I like this facial technology quite a bit. This is 2023, and I feel like we should definitely step into the future here, you know? Like, man. And sp some of these rides here at Epic Universe, I know a lot of people, oh, oh no problem. <laughs> oh, is that a little critter? Yeah, Mickey wanted to come in. Hi. Oh, oh, look at that little critter. What a cutie. You can you jump up on your thing. Okay. All right. So rides. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my God. She's so cute. Oh, she's so cute. No, it's a she. Oh, it's a she. Okay. She's named Mickey. Don't eat the tape. Go away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, oh, much fun. Oh, yes. Rides. <laughs> rides. Every universe. A lot of the people on. On the Twitterverse, or at least the Disney people, maybe most of them, um, I always have um, two complaints. I always notice with with Universal, and I, I I'm like, don't worry, guys, it'll be fine. But and I'll address both of them here. One of them, they always say, you know, screen, screen, screens, right? But it seems like, at least from what you've shared and what you can see. A lot of the Epic Universe rides will be pretty practical in terms of animatronics, and sure, they may have a screen here or there, but it seems like they'll be pretty, pretty practical. Would you say? Would you say that? I mean, it feels like a healthy mix because mm -hmm. they still want to tout it as the most technologically advanced theme park ever. So mm -hmm. you're going to have things like um, the integration of projection mapping and augmented reality on Mario mm -hmm. Kart. Um, mm -hmm. But then the Yoshi ride is all physical. The Donkey Kong is all physical um, mm -hmm. and has a lot of animatronics, actually, from what we've seen. Mm -hmm. um, but then you get things like the Wizarding World British Ministry ride, which mm -hmm. is a combination of projections and animatronics and animatronics with projections. So like yeah. projection mapping the actors onto a moving, mm -hmm. walking animatronic. Uh, I'm very curious to see how that turns out. But it's a combination that makes it more than just a flat screen. It is like a 3D mm -hmm. integration without the glasses. So not like the Spider-Man right. ride or Gringotts, but something mm -hmm. that feels 3D because it's layered. Um, but then you also have How to Train Your Dragon, and it's rumored the roller coaster will have three animatronics on it. So, mm -hmm. and then you have the big giant puppets on the stage mm -hmm. show for the How to Train Your Dragon. So it's very physical over there. I think the Monsters ride is a good combination also. Mm -hmm. uh, similar to other recent attractions, it's uh, expected to have at least one LED wall, like a giant screen mm -hmm. as a background. Um, and, and it's supposed to be like a curved LED screen, like the Bourne Stuntacular type screen mm -hmm. or the background for the Dragon Show um, mm -hmm. or the new Minion Blast. Those are, those are LED screens. Um, but it will also have animatronics. So all the monsters will be physical in most of the scenes but also it will have uh an immersive screen type scene but it's there will be no 3d glasses and i think that's one of the biggest complaints uh so yeah we don't have to worry about that at least yeah and i that sounds pretty good to me because like screens are like like, the, like you said used in that way like for example sequel for pets i think has a fantastic mm -hmm. and promising screens because the screens aren't like the focus they're like helping Right. Seen, and the animatronics are the focus. And I think views like that blended, it's like chef's kiss to me. And the projection mapped onto the foreground objects in Secret Life of Pets is so mm -hmm. effective at creating this layered 3D effect without glasses. So I'd like to see much more of that. Yeah. And you mentioned that the Wizarding World ride, the Ministry of Magic. It is a rumored or based on the permits and what you've said here. They're using the flu network to get from Paris to London. How is that going to work? Because that sounds really cool. I think they've created 
uh, a new type of thing called a metro flu station. Mm-hmm. Um, just like getting into a subway station, you're going to mm-hmm. get into a flu station because normally you just take the fireplace in your own home. Mm-hmm. But maybe you're on the go, you're in the street and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I need to get to London right now. Here is the flu station, which is a, a whole row of fireplaces mm-hmm. for public use. How convenient. So <laughs> we can get from Paris to London through the metro flu. Uh, and I think there'll be signage and like, it'll look like a subway station. So it'll be pretty clear that we're leaving one place and going to another. Wow. And the queue for this um, just looks massive. It's almost going to be like, it's almost as big as like a ride itself. Um, and like, it's like humongous. What is, are they going to have, they're going to have, it's going to be in that room where they have that big statue, that golden mm-hmm. statue. And so you're getting in the, this particular ride and be what's the room to be like the scoop system, like transformers, but like a next next level version of it. Mm-hmm. The the queue, just like Forbidden Journey or Gringotts, is going to be almost an experience itself, mm-hmm. like uh, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Like mm-hmm. it is um, that room you're talking about, the atrium of the British Ministry in the permits is over five stories tall. Ooh, just, for, just for walking through from one part of the queue to the next part of the queue is a, is essentially like the hangar on Rise of the Resistance. It's just to be impressive, but also it's a recognizable location from the films that we've seen from the Harry Potter series. Um, and then the ride itself. Yes. The ride vehicle is, uh, I mean, the scoop from Spider-Man or Transformers is an easy way to describe it, but it's actually mm-hmm. twice as big as that. It's twice as tall. It's Ooh. twice as wide. It's now, going is to it look double decker or is it just no as- the actual ride mechanics of it is so big uh-huh. it's more, it's more closely related to the star tours motion base than it is to the scoop because oh, it can wow. go up and down 10 or 12 feet in addition to doing yaw pitch and roll um but also it's going to look like you're getting into a tower of terror seating arrangement with rose in a box <laughs> And that box oh, is on a motion sense. base, that and that motion it. base can go up and down. So throughout the entire attraction, you'll park into scenes, and instead of locking in like in Rise of Resistance and go up and down in a locked-in elevator, mm-hmm. this can go up and down on its own. So it's kind of all in one on the motion base. Uh, but I imagine we'll see that. like projection mapped um, effects in an elevator type shaft to make it feel like you're going much higher and much lower. But you will actually be going up and down to create that feeling in your stomach. Interesting. Wow. I'm trying to picture that. That's like insane. <laughs> yeah. While still actually going from scene to scene, like yeah, forward like, and backward, because that's, that's like what the elevators way. do at the ministry. It's like a lot of things happening at once. That's <laughs> that's crazy. It's so kind of yeah, like a, feel- a, everything. It's a, it's a ride system that does everything. <laughs> All in one. Yeah. That's crazy. So, but you said these, so the actual, like, motion, you'll only be going, like, a maximum of 12 feet up and down. But I think so. Also, but, uh, but obviously, with the, the feel like you're going high. But, man, so 12 feet with all that motion, it'll be kind of, kind of a cool, like, thrilling experience because you're not just going up and down, but moving and doing this and probably turning around. So, it'll yeah. be quite a, quite a fun ride. Um and the rumored plot is uh, what we're, we're trying to chase uh, Professor Umbridge from escaping. I think, yeah, the rumored story for years now has been Dolores Umbridge um, is being tried for her crimes in the court mm-hmm. and she escapes with the Death Eaters and they're trying to find a time turner to bring back Voldemort, uh, which is great because it's an all new story that takes place after essentially not just after the books or the movies from harry potter but also mm-hmm. after diagon alley because if you visit mm-hmm. hogsmeade diagon alley and then this it's almost like you're in order that they open the lands you're experiencing the universal creative trilogy of harry potter stories and this is their conclusion that takes place in the future now oh that's that's cool i didn't even think about that that's actually that's smart i like that a lot um so do you think if this land is successful, it will be replicated at other parks around the world? I mean, I think it's possible that you guys might get it in Hollywood. If this ride is successful, um, mm-hmm. 
instead of getting the Diagon Alley that we have with Gringotts, I could totally see a miniature Diagon Alley with a more expanded London just to have the British ministry. Um, maybe down, uh, maybe we're Fast and Furious. Uh, 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 Super train. Yeah, fall, for fall, your train. Yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. that's a good opportunity. Once that coaster is open, you all don't need your uh, supercharged anymore. Mm -hmm. Tear all that down and <laughs> build that out as Diagon Alley. Get yourself the train and connect your two lands. But mm -hmm. instead of Gringotts, take this new ride because it's going to be really cool. <laughs> Yeah, you know, because that's that's what I was I was thinking, but I was piecing up what I was I was hearing and what I was thinking, like wow, because you know, you know this, the tram uh, steel tour uh, move down to the lower lot. Mm -hmm. They take all that space, um, that whole area, big plot of area for if you actually look at it, it's like very good decent size. And I was like, yeah, maybe we can stick out the ministry out here. Yeah, because that, that'll be a, a newer ride tech versus you know green dots, which is right not old at this point, but you know it's older, like might as well have the latest and the greatest because especially with that ride system, five stories tall. I'll take it. Yeah, that, that sounds really cool. I mean, yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's what I would do because I think uh I think there will continuously always be um, Wizarding World expansions. Mm -hmm. um, so once this is done here at Epic Universe, I could see Universal Beijing getting their first expansion, maybe the Hagrid mm -hmm. ride or maybe something else. And I could see Hollywood getting an expansion down the line because Universal, um, they're making money off it and they're mm -hmm. going to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And just the whole brand, I mean, Hogwarts Legacy was like one of the best selling games mm -hmm. I mean, billions of dollars. So, That'd be so we'll see though. Foolish. Still yeah. early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, still, yeah, still plenty of time. Yeah, this one hasn't even opened up yet. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, and and of course, gotta see how the ride tech works out. Because wow, I'm, I'm trying to imagine. I I got I can't wait to see the behind the scenes of those videos. Yeah. With those hopefully, people. hopefully it works. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hopefully it works. And <laughs> I like that they're going ambitious though. You know, so even mm -hmm. if it didn't work. It's you know props for like for trying something absolutely insane because it's got to take risks in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. But and monsters is and we've seen this already from the ride check. Basically, is was it an upgraded version of Forbidden Journey's Kook Arm system or the same? Because I, I think know, it's I think it's the same. Um, there was some confusion. They there is a version that is more of a roller coaster track. Um, mm -hmm. I think one park in Asia has a, a ride that just opened that utilizes this, and it really it just kind of has like a little 10 foot drop here and there. Mm -hmm. So it is roller coaster-esque. This one, though, for monsters looks to be pretty much the exact same ride system as mm -hmm. Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. The confusion came because they had to hire a different company to do the track. I believe wow. it was um dynamic attractions was not available mm -hmm. so they hired peterson incorporated and peterson does normally make roller coaster track so everyone was like oh they hired a roller coaster company they're doing the roller coaster thing but then we saw the track be delivered and i've had confirmation it is the exact same type of track as forbidden journey and we just saw the ride vehicles thanks to a bio reconstruct picture being loaded into the building and it looks mm -hmm. just like the kooka arms we would see on forbidden journey the big difference is this version of the ride will not have the screen carousel moments mm -hmm. where you're locked in with a screen moving at the same rate of speed. Mm -hmm. Instead, you're just going to go from scene to scene to scene. If there is a screen, it's just going to be a wall of LEDs um, mm -hmm. that you'll move past, but there will not be a small carousel um, dome following you around. So this will be like more dark ride like it seems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think so. But also there's rumors that they're going to really play with the KUKA arms capability instead mm -hmm. of a fluid floaty motion like Forbidden mm -hmm. Journey. They have the opportunity here to create a dropping effect by really oh. propelling the KUKA arm as fast as possible to try to add a level of thrill. So expect a free fall scene on this ride. Interesting. I didn't think of that either, but it makes sense because it is a full range. I mean, have the Kuka arms here at Legoland, California for a while now, and they can do all these crazy things. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that it can do another dropping thing. Now it's funny, it's 
there's a lot of ways you can make a dropping sensation without actually having an actual traditional drop. Mm -hmm. That's just yeah, crazy. Like Rise of the Resistance is so funny. Cause the technology these days blows my blows me away. And you said the um or it's rumored that the seat vehicles will be like shaped like coffins with spike. It looks like the, the, I the, think it's I think it's the medical board that um Frankenstein's monster is up against, mm. but with like uh these gothic spikes all around it. So it's it's very much the Frankenstein experiment. Mm -hmm. Um, and instead of having the enclosed thing blocking your peripheral vision on Forbidden Journey, this is probably a more open design mm -hmm. because you're not going to have that dome screen. You're going to be able to look to your sides in mm -hmm. the scenes that you're in. Um, so definitely more of a dark ride feel. Mm -hmm. Which that is good too, because I have a friend um, who's claustrophobic and mm -hmm. just he went on Forbidden Journey and was like, oh, I can't take because it's all closed in. But mm -hmm. I was telling him, I was like, this one won't be like that. So he's excited to try this one out because he, he feels, it seems like it'll be like less claustrophobic since there won't be a dome over Yeah, you. but there might be some darkness. So yeah, we, darkness, have that. Yeah. we have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's fair, but at least, yeah, at least the ride of vehicle seems like in a more mm -hmm. open design, which is pretty cool. And um, it allows you to like, you see everything, which is cool. Fantastic. And Dragon seems like it'll be the largest land if i'm not mistaken correct mm -hmm. and the most family i guess family friendly land i know a lot of people again those same people on the twitterverse here seems to just universal isn't building family rides but i definitely think with this park and land they are certainly trying i feel like it'll be a good mix of family things for the younger kids to do and more thrilling things for everyone else to do would you say it's a decent it's balance it's funny because it's universal still. So it, even they're most family friendly for the most part. Like this roller coaster is like Hagrid's. It will yeah. have some, some fairly extreme banked curves and high speeds. Mm -hmm. So for a family coaster, it's still more thrilling than any family coaster at like um, Disney World or Disneyland. Mm -hmm. So um, but they and then also like they have the spinning rides, the Skyfly rides. Oh, yeah, like, but that, that, that like that's upside like, down. right it's like the dumbo ride except you have a lever and if you do this over <laughs> and over again you can barrel roll over and over again. Yeah. You're like family ride yeah technically but also you can go upside down so yeah. um and then the, there is the boat ride which i think is the most family friendly ride probably in the whole park i doubt it would even have a height requirement as long as you can stand mm -hmm. on your own you'll be able to ride the boat ride at dragons and the stage show also um it, it's a live action stage show with giant dragon puppets so that is definitely something the family can do all together um, and yet yeah, it's the biggest land by acreage because it's all sprawling out to create this um, Isle of Burke. And obviously probably the most intense ride in the park would be Starfall Racers. Do you have, like, if you were to guess like, an estimate of how the speed of that would be, like, well, 70, like, Velocicoaster style or around then or, like, because this thing looks like it can kick butt. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure on speeds. Uh, I'm not the best with numbers, but I would assume it has to be like Velocicoaster speed to make it over that celestial spin, which is almost like two intersecting hands. top hats that barrel roll over yeah. each other. Um, that is a steep climb. So I'm imagining you have to be 60, 70 miles per hour just to get over that one moment. But also earlier on the ride, there is several hills that are airtime hills. So... Um, regardless of speed, this is a fairly intense and mature roller coaster, especially for Universal. But coming off of Velocicoaster um, and now seeing what uh, Fast and Furious uh, roller coaster at Hollywood is doing, it seems to be the MO now. The Universal is not afraid to just do an actual thrilling roller coaster every <laughs> once in a while. Um, and this one is going to be, I, I hope it has onboard music. I really do, because this is going to be a beautiful ride. Um, and it's going to be like a spiritual experience. Like you're going to leave your body after going up and down and up and down and then some really fast straightaways. And then that celestial spin, it's just like a ballet. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> and there's plenty of like cool space music out there that mm -hmm. you know, on board boarding and you just have these like crazy space tunes. Like well, it could be like 
a form of meditation. <laughs> They're hiring real musicians for all of the lands. Um, I, including Danny Elfman is doing Dark Universe. Ooh, so oh, I, I wouldn't cool. be surprised whoever's doing the music for uh, Celestial Park in the center, they may be orchestrating something, at least for the queue areas, because mm -hmm. this is a ride that's not based on a property, probably. And just like the Constellation Carousel in the center, they have an opportunity to really brand it to itself and give it its own score, give it its own look and feel and, and make it like special to Epic Universe and something you can't do anywhere else. Yeah, it's uh yeah, I can't wait to see the stats for that. It's it's is it one or two launches? I think it's two launches because one is right before the spin and one is at the start of the ride. Oh yes. I, I was like, I thought it was two as I could not figure out where that second one was. But now lastly, let's talk about the the shows because there seems to be a, a decent amount of them. One was obviously replaced in Dark Universe, but they had a training dragon show, which we think it's probably going to be the same one from Beijing, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. yeah, untrainable. Uh, they trademarked it as the untrainable dragon uh, in case <laughs> there's any confusion about what is untrainable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and that one, uh, one in Beijing, I watched it. That looks fantastic with a massive toothless right there. And is there, do you think they will bring a show um, like in the in future phase of Dark Universe or was that just as permanently, permanently cut? You think? I think that that is the end of the show for Dark Universe. Um, they, they're going to have some street atmosphere and there's mm -hmm. opportunities for street side shows, not just in that land, but everywhere. Um, entertainment has little like dressing rooms all over how to train your dragon so i think character interactions are going to be not just in the meet and greet space but like around the land um and i think the same thing for nintendo and then over at wizarding world they do have a stage show um mm. which has a changing rooms for live actors so it is a live action stage stage show rumored to have fantastic beasts so we'll see what that actually ends up being but that is a large theater too and that one as you said, you enter through like a circus tent, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like, from the like movie, yeah. Yeah, like the second movie from Fantastic Beasts. So, because uh, the land is themed to Paris, Wizarding Paris, from mm -hmm. the second Fantastic Beast film. Like they canceled the ride, which was going to incorporate the main characters from the films. Mm -hmm. So, this is an opportunity to kind of invent something that is wholly original to this land, but also an opportunity to see a bunch of magical creatures on a stage. Mm -hmm. Which is That'd be pretty cool. I mean, yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be pretty nice. And of course, um, they'll have more, obviously, more wand experiences and stuff throughout that yes. land. Yes, there are interactive windows everywhere, according to the plans. Uh, and there'll be a new wand shop as well, which is the wand shop from uh, Wizarding Paris called Cosma Acajor. And I'm guessing that they would have all new wands, but the wands come in little triangle boxes at that wand ah, store. So opportunity cool. for like integrated branding from the the canon of the stories <laughs> i like and so is there going to be a parade like an opportunity for a parade at this park because i haven't yeah. heard that mentioned anywhere there is um in one of the plans it said phase or future parade building. It didn't even say phase mm -hmm. two it just said future mm -hmm. parade building it's actually located to the left of the hotel behind the monster's land. It says future parade wow. building. But then just recently, there's actually plans for a second future parade building on this other side of Wizarding World. So mm -hmm. much like the current Universal Studios Florida, they have an opportunity to have a regular parade, like a mm -hmm. year round parade and a seasonal parade for like um, mm -hmm. a, a Mardi Gras or a Christmas or something. Um, so I think this park, from what it looks like over time, we'll go all in on the holidays or extra events. Mm -hmm. Just like I said, they're building a, a soundstage later on. This isn't for the opening of the park, but between mm -hmm. the soundstage and the two parade buildings, they really have an opportunity to go all in on Halloween, Christmas, and the year-round parade. And I think, honestly, I think it would probably be more kid-friendly stuff. Since mm -hmm. they already have Halloween Horror Nights and Mardi Gras and things like that, this mm -hmm. could this is an opportunity to go and really compete with like Mickey's Not So Scary or Mickey's Holiday Party here in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, so the parade route would probably be the upper circle around the central hub of Epic Universe because that's where the two parade buildings are at the top of that circle on either side of the hotel. 
And would they, so they wouldn't go through any lands. They just go no. through the yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Oh. Yeah. And there's um, there's the two shows, it seems like. And the hub area, there's the the fountain. The show looks like Bellagio, World of Color type of thing. Is that going to be running during the day? Like, even if there's not a show happening during mm -hmm. the day, there'll just be, like, fountains, like, they can... Like be going on during the day, or the, or the I think show so. during the day at night. I think that the the seating area around it, because there'll be food options around it, and a Starbucks, so you can grab yeah. your Starbucks and go sit on these bleachers and just watch a, a fountain show that's either constantly going on or maybe every fifteen or twenty minutes. It has a little thing. Um, even at Universal Studios Florida, when we had the Lagoon show going, they would kind of do a random thing every hour in the Lagoon to like music for movies, just to utilize oh. the fountains because they're there anyway. Might as well turn them on. Uh, so I think it would be something like that. But then at the end of the night, they're going to have a fireworks show that will incorporate that fountain, but not just that fountain. There's also fountains in all of the water features throughout the entire center of the park. There's fountains around the carousel and there are fountains and waterfalls in the entry area. So if you were to watch the fireworks anywhere in the hub, I think you would have some integrated fountain displays and lighting stuff mixing with the fireworks ahead of you. Ah, oh, that's nice. And the hotel back there, um, we'll have a rooftop viewing area for fireworks mm -hmm. as well, right? It Which will. Be, it's, will it's, that uh, be for only hotel guests or can regular guests pop up there? I'm not sure. Uh, I think some of the Disney hotels have to limit viewing areas um, during fireworks time, but like the rest of the time you can go up there. So it might be something like that. There's also a private ballroom up there. So you would be able Ooh, to have a private function events. with a balcony that overlooks the fireworks. So like you could be doing your event and then be like, fireworks are starting and there's windows on all the ballrooms. Mm -hmm. You could see the fireworks even if you didn't go outside. But yeah, the rooftop bar, I imagine it would be like the one at Aventura, which we have here um, at the top floor of that is a rooftop bar and anyone can go up there. Um, but yeah, I, they might limit it during the fireworks time. We'll have to see. Yeah, so that private ballroom, I can foresee it being booked out a year in advance. <laughs> that sounds like a gorgeous uh, way to end your night. Like mm -hmm. man, that hotel itself will probably be just from like conventions and from private events. I feel like it'll be booked like most, even on the slow periods. I feel like it'll be pretty booked up because it's in a prime position for everything, like conventions and stuff. Like I think I'll have like no problem booking actually all three of the hotels. Mm -hmm. And they're probably, do you know when they might get started on another one? I know you said there's room for them in the future, but do they have any concrete plans to start? Are they going to wait for these to open first and see how they're filling up? I imagine they'll wait for these to open first because they are doing three all at the same time. Normally they only open one or two at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like Endless Summer was a lot of rooms they added all at once. And because mm -hmm. they're adding the new theme park, I guess they feel they need these three. But with between the 500 rooms at the hotel at the back of the park, which we believe is Universal Helios Grand Hotel, uh, and then the 750 rooms for one of the hotels across the street, and another 750 rooms for the other hotel across the street. Those are Stella Nova Resort and Terra Luna Resort. That's a lot of rooms to add all at once. So I can imagine them waiting. However, if they start booking them a year before they open, which is just next summer, Mm -hmm. uh, summer 2024, if they start booking them and they're booked solid, mm -hmm. they may fast track plans to start building more so that by the time Epic opens, they're already breaking ground on the next one. And that next one would probably be a little bit higher north on Universal Boulevard, um, which they've already like put permits through and everything for water drainage. So mm -hmm. they're ready to go uh, whenever they're, they need the capacity. Interesting. Oh, okay. That's, that's, I can't. They're just Universal's on it. I must say, they're not wasting any time. Nope. Love that about them. Absolutely love it. Um, the you did. I remember you mentioning one of your videos a uh, a few months ago that the uh, Stella Nova and Terra Luna, Terra Luna. Mm -hmm. I, I always mix the names up. Um, could maybe, such because of the construction, the the prefab construction, maybe could open like in 2024, is that still a possibility? Um, going by the timetable for when the roads around it will be done, I don't <laughs> think so. I oh yeah, think they have to do the epic unit. It was really that. dependent on when the roads are gonna be done, but also mm -hmm. looking at the timetable now, 
I didn't realize they were going to be installing these uh, reflective tiles one by one. So that's going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> yeah. Although even that, they're like kind of booking it yeah. there. So. <laughs> um, I think the plan currently is to have team members and uh, the installs for like furniture and point of sale system, everything like that early 2025 so they might be doing like their own version of soft openings a couple months before the park opens so just like the park itself if they do if maybe they'll do team member previews for the hotels as well because those hotels will be ready a few months before the park is probably ready to open and one last point cannibalization uh, i hear this being bought up a lot too i know uh, people are i seem some may be concerned about when Epic opens, no one's going to the other two parks. Mm -hmm. But I know the other two parks have massive expansions planned, probably to probably counter that. Do you think there'll be much cannibalization, any cannibalization at all? Or do you think it'll be pretty balanced with the Epic and Zelda coming and then whatever is coming to Florida after? Do you think that crowds will still be coming back um, to all three parks instead of just going to Epic? I think Universal hopes that people will buy a multi-day ticket for all the parks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that this will just boost sales for all the parks the way that Volcano Bay does um, mm -hmm. as like an add-on. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if, like, they believe that the roller coasters they just opened at Islands of Adventure and the future, mm -hmm. hopefully future Zelda expansion should be good enough for Islands of Adventure for a while. Mm -hmm. And they did bolster kid-friendly stuff at Universal Studios Florida in recent years with the Minion Land, Minion Blast, and then the DreamWorks Land um, coming up next year. So there's a hope that because it's their flagship park, like it's the mm -hmm. main, it's the one that says Universal Studios, there's a mm -hmm. belief within the company that people will always buy a ticket for that. Like if you go to Disney World, you're going to go mm -hmm. to Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom yeah. Right. No matter what. I hope that's true for their sake because I am personally not a fan of a lot of the newer stuff they've done at Universal Studios Florida as much as I am Islands of Adventure. But then mm -hmm. again, there's lots of people who don't like thrill rides and they're not going to mm -hmm. want to go to Islands of Adventure. So it should be okay. I do think that shortly after Zelda opens, something will close at Universal Studios Florida and they will announce a big expansion there. And then even if it does get cannibalized in the first couple of years after Epic, it will make more than make up for it when the new thing opens at Universal Studios Florida later in the decade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah, that makes sense. Because yeah, it's nice to add something cyclically to everyone so that way they can mm -hmm. all transition. But yeah, wow. Anyway, this is a pretty bright future. Pretty bright future for all of the Universal Parks, but especially Universal Orlando. Mm -hmm. and I mean, hey, I know you saw those latest attendance numbers uh, earlier in the year. Hey, a lot of the Universal Parks overtook the, like, the second uh, non-Magic Kingdom Disney Parks. And I think I can continue with that. these expansions keep ramping up. Yeah. I mean, Disney is always going to do well. Uh, but it, there's nothing stopping Universal from taking just a little bit more away from Disney. <laughs> <laughs> little piece of the pie. But a hey, that, it, it helps really... Um, even Disney, I'd say, because you know, people are going to come to Epic and maybe take a day and mm -hmm. go to Disney World. So it really helps out the entire, and even, see, even stuff like SeaWorld, the whole Orlando market. It's good yeah, to have a whole exactly. bunch of competition, a whole, whole bunch of theme parks close to each other because, you know, something draws the main attraction, then you take a day or two and go to the other ones. Right. And, and my name is Walt. Thank you so much. Miss Lisa Sella, permit princess, everybody, <laughs> for joining the ch channel. I this was such a fun conversation. Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness, she has it. That's a dope logo. Way you, you can sell that. You thank you, to Scott Scott Walker. Thank you for the mug. <laughs> Scott, oh, I love Scott Walker. Yeah, I always harass him on Twitter, but yeah, thank you so much for joining again. Uh, theme park stop, Orlando park stop, mm -hmm. links below up to the date. First in the know information for Universal Orlando, Hollywood, International Parks, and much more. Hope to have you on the channel again and have a epic day. Thank you. <laughs>